According to a physics world poll conducted in 2002, the most beautiful experiment in physics is the two-slit experiment with electrons. Richard Feynman stated this about the double-slit experiment with electrons. Many people have tried to explain away the double slit experiment and quantum wave collapse in general by invoking what is termed decoherence. Yet, in this following article, Richard Kahn Henry, professor of physics at John Hopkins University, states that decoherence is known to be wrong. In Renegar type experiments, the wave function is collapsed simply by your human mind seeing nothing. Here is a video on the interaction free Renegar negative result experiment. In the following video, the interaction free Zeilinger bomb tester experiment is explained. As well, it is pointed out that a detector can be placed at only one slit during the double slit experiment, and yet the photon or electron still mysteriously collapse, collapses in the unobserved slit, even though the particles traveling through that unobserved slit did not interact with the detector. The following video also clearly explains why decoherence does not solve the measurement problem. Even Steven Weinberg himself, an atheist, re rejects decoherence as a coherent explanation for quantum wave collapse. In fact, he states that decoherence begs the question. You can read it more clearly here. And at the 16 and a half minute mark of the following video, the reason why detector interference and or decoherence does not explain quantum wave collapse is explained in an easy to understand manner. Simply put, they state that observation changes the nature of what we are observing, not just the activity of what we are observing. And in the following Dr. Quantum video, it is also very good for highlighting the unexpected effect that observation itself has in quantum mechanics. And in this following video, Anton Zeilinger, a leading experimentalist in quantum mechanics, states that the path taken by the photon is not an element of reality. We are not allowed to talk about the photon passing through this or this slit. Neither are we allowed to say the photon passes through both slits. All this kind of language is not applicable. And in the following video, Anton Zeilinger goes on to state that we know what the particle is doing at the source when it is created. We know what it is doing at detector when it is registered, but we do not know what it is doing in between. Yet, contrary to Anton Zeilinger's claim that we know what the particle is doing at the source when it is created, we know what it is doing at the detector 
when it is registered, but we do not know what it is doing in between. The fact of the matter is that not only do we not know what the photon is doing in between in the double slit as it is traveling, we really don't even know how photons are emitted and absorbed in the first place. The following Wikipedia article on quantum electrodynamics states it this way. It is important not to overinterpret these diagrams. Nothing is implied about how a, how a particle gets from one point to another. The diagrams do not imply that the particles are moving in straight or curved lines. They do not imply that the particles are moving with fixed speeds. The fact that the photon is often represented by convention by a wavy line and not a straight line does not imply that it is thought that it is more wave-like than is an electron. The images are just symbols to represent the actions above. Photons and electrons do somehow move from point to point. Electrons somehow emit and absorb photons. We do not know how these things happen, but the theory tells us about the probabilities of these things happening. In fact, a, re a main reason why we do not know exactly how these things happen is because photons are emitted and absorbed by atoms by what is termed instantaneous quantum leaps. In fact, Quantum tunneling of electrons is also now found to be an instantaneous process. Personally, I consider an object disappearing from one position and then instantaneously appearing at another position, such as what is happening during quantum leaps and quantum tun tunneling to be a miraculous occurrence. And although, according to Anton Zeilinger, we cannot know exactly what the photon is doing in the double slit experiment between emission and absorption, we do know that while a photon is doing whatever it is doing in the double split, that the photon is mathematically the defined as being in an infinite dimensional state. Defined as being in an infinite dimensional state that also takes an infinite amount of information to describe properly. Some people may say, but hey, whatever the photon is doing in the double slit while it is traveling in its infinite dimensional infinite information state, we at least know that it is traveling at the speed of light. Yet, special relativity is just about as mysterious as a photon existing in an infinite dimensional infinite information state. For instance, at the three and a half minute mark of the following video, the universe folds and collapses into a tunnel shape as a hypothetical observer moves towards the higher dimension of the speed of light. Moreover, at the speed of light, time as we understand it, comes to a complete stop. Here are a few quotes that get on this e, uh, eternal attribute that is associated with special relativity. To grasp the whole time coming to a complete stop at the speed of light concept a little more easily, Imagine moving away from the face of the clock at the speed of light. 
but not the hands on the clock stay stationary as you moved away from the face of the clock at the speed of light. Moving away from the face of the clock at the speed of light happens to be the same thought experiment that gave Einstein his breakthrough insight into special relativity. You can see that in this following video. Moreover, Richard Feynman, in his role in developing quantum electrodynamics, which is a mathematical theory in which special relativity and quantum mechanics are unified, Richard Feynman was only able to unify special relativity and quantum mechanics and qu into uh, quantum electrodynamics by quote unquote brushing infinity under the rug by a te technique that is called renormalization. In the following video, Richard Feynman rightly expresses his unease with brushing infinity under the rug in quantum electrodynamics. I don't know about Richard Feynman, but as for myself, being a Christian theist, I find it rather comforting to know that it takes an infinite amount of logic to figure out what one stinky tiny bit of space-time is going to do. The reason why I find it rather comforting is because of John 1.1, 1, 1, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word in John 1.1 1, 1 is translated from the word logos in Greek. Logos also happens to be the root word from which we derive our modern word, logic. So that it would take an infinite amount of logic to know what a tiny bit of space-time is going to do is pretty much exactly what one would ex should expect to see under Christian presupposition. In fact, as a Christian theist, I find both the double slit experiment and quantum electrodynamics to be extremely comforting for Christian concerns. In the double slit experiment, we found that while a photon and or electron is traveling in the double slit experiment, it is mathematically required to be defined as being in an infinite dimensional state. and we found that the photon is also mathematically required to be described by an infinite amount of information. Now saying something is a, in an infinite dimensional state to me as a Christian theist sounds very much like somebody is referencing the theistic attribute of omnipresence. And then saying something takes an infinite amount of information to describe to me sounds very much like the theistic attribute, attribute of omniscience to me. And then we also saw that when quantum mechanics and special relativity were unified in quantum electrodynamics, that it still took an infinite amount of logic to figure out what quote unquote one stinky tiny bit of space time was going to do. Now all this is pretty much exactly what we would expect to see under Christian presuppositions. But on the other hand, under atheistic materialism and or naturalism, and the presuppositions inherent therein, there simply is no rational explanation for why we should find these things to be as they are. 
Moreover, to top that off, the basics of quantum wave collapse dovetail perfectly into some of the oldest philosophical arguments for the existence of God that were made by Aristotle and Aquinas. And I would say even offers empirical confirmation of those ancient philosophical arguments. Michael Egnor states that Aristotle, 2300 years ago, described the basics of, colla of collapse of quantum waveform. Here you can see a technical explanation and a video of Aquinas' first way argument for God where you can, at your own leisure, see just how well the argument for motion dovetails into what we are seeing in quantum wave collapse and quantum mechanics in general. And uh, to put Aquinas' argument much more simply, the first mover is necessary for change occurring at each moment. An interesting supplemental note. Stephen Weinberg, who I remind is an atheist, states that in the instrumentalist approach of quantum mechanics, Humans are brought into the laws of nature at the most fundamental level, and that this thus precludes us from ever describing humans as being solely the result of the laws of nature. Simply put, quantum mechanics in the instrumentalist approach, which I personally consider to be the most rational approach, Humans are brought into the laws of nature at the most fundamental level, and this directly undermines the overall Darwinian goal of ever trying to explain humans as merely being the result of the most fundamental laws of nature. Well, that's it for this video. And again, all papers and videos referenced in this video may be accessed in the link provided in the video description. Thanks uh, for watching.